Good night, everyone. Wherever you are, I invite you to join us as we pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy most holy and precious name. We give you praise and thanks, Lord Jesus, for all that you've done for us and what you will continue to do for us. We thank you for tonight and we thank you for the message that is in store for us. I pray, Lord, that even as we sit in our various homes, that you will minister to us through your preacher and that at the end of it all, we will all indeed be blessed. I pray for some person tonight, Lord, who has not yet made a decision to accept you, even at the end of this summer, Lord Jesus, that they will make a decision to accept you as your personal Lord and Savior. Continue to be the preacher and his family, continue to bless and provide for them. Yes, that you continue to take full charge and control of each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Service, let us pray. Our kind and most loving eternal Father, which art in heaven, we thank you for your blessings and for your mercies and your goodness towards us. As we are about to sing songs and praise unto your name, I pray that the Holy Spirit will draw the divine close to us. As our prayer in Jesus' most holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. Our first song today would be 249. Praise him, praise him. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Sing all earth His wonderful love proclaim. Hail Him, hail Him, highest of angels in glory. Strength and honor give to His holy name. Thy good shepherd, Jesus will guide His children. In His arms He carries them all the long. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent praise. Praise Him, praise Him, ever a joyful song. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sins He suffered and bled and died. He our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail Him, hail Him, the Lord crucified. Sung His praises, Jesus who bore our sorrows. Love unbounded, wonderful, deep and strong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Heavenly portals, of the Hosanna's ring. Jesus, Savior, reign forever and ever. Crown Him, crown Him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Oh, worship the King, all glorious above. Oh, gratefully sing His wonderful love. Our shield and defender, the ancient of days, pavilion in splendor and guarded with praise. O oh, tell of his might, O oh, sing of his grace, whose robe is the light, whose canopy space. His chariots of wrath, the deep thunder clouds form. And dark is his path on the wings of the storm. Thy bountiful care, what tongue can recite? It breathes in the air, it shines in the light. It streams from the hills, it descends to the plain, and sweetly distills in the dew and the rain. Frail children of dust and feeble as frail, in thee do we trust, nor find thee to fail. Thy mercy, how tender, how firm to the end, our maker, defender, redeemer, and friend. Faith of our fathers, living still. In spite of dungeon, fire, and sword, Oh, how our hearts beat high with joy When 
broadcast we are so happy to have you please be ready to listen to bible truth please get your bibles in hand and listen to the word of god truth nothing but the truth which will be done by elder anderson felix welcome one welcome all in jesus christ Good evening again, everyone. On our health tip today, we're going to talk about the benefits of trust in God. Hebrews 11, 6 tells us, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. When we trust in God and ask him for help, he is willing to cooperate with us. This assurance provides healing for the soul. Now, since the creation of Adam and Eve, when invited, God has been dwelling in the hearts, souls, and minds of men and women throughout the ages of time. The human frame was made in the image of God. Our Creator tells us when we allow Him into the temple that in sickness or in health, He will never leave us. The temple of God is by design a sacred and holy place. He wants us to prosper and to be in good health. Now the work of cultivating the heart is profitable at all times and in all places. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building according to 1 Corinthians 3.9. We may learn a lesson from the farmer in cultivating the field. He must cooperate with God. So in the cultivate, cultivation of character, you must cooperate with God. As a foundational principle, the laws of nature are laws of God that are truly 
as divine as the precepts of the Decalogue that were written by the finger of God. The laws that govern our physical organism, God has written upon every nerve, muscle, and fiber of the body. Since the mind and the soul find expression through the body, both mental and spiritual vigor are in great degree dependent upon physical strength and activity. Whatever promotes physical health promotes the development of a strong mind and a well-balanced character. Without health, no one can as distinct, distinctly understand or as completely fulfill his obligation to himself, to his fellow beings, or to his creator. Therefore, the health should be as faithfully guarded as the character. The Lord created both mind and body relationships. The body sympathizes with the mind in order for us to be able to purge our mind from disease one of the most important principles of mental hygiene that Jesus, the master physician, provides is found in Philippians 4.8 that says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. So, so build a relationship with God today through prayer. Prayer is the act of opening your heart to God as to a friend. Prayer is the key in the hand of faith that opens the heaven storehouse where we can access the infinite resources of the omnipotence. He tells us, ye ask and we receive not because we ask amiss. However, when it is according to his will, he says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. The Lord asks us in James 5, 14 to 15, Is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. Yes, without faith, it is impossible to please God. However, when we trust in God and take him at his word, according to Philippians 4.13, we can say and believe that we can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth us. Isaiah 41 tells us, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Today, what assurance we have when we trust in God.
everybody. I greet you in the wonderful and powerful name of Jesus Christ. I'm so happy that you uh, joined us tonight again for yet another broadcast. And we pray tonight as you listen to the Word of God that somehow God is going to find His way into your heart, into your life, into your family. I pray that you have been keeping well. I pray that the messages that went before was a blessing to you and a blessing to your family. Tonight is another night when we're going to Seek to bring glory to God. It's all about God. It's all about our soul salvation in Jesus Christ. Uh, the message for tonight, the message for tonight uh, is, who is your daddy? That's the message caption for tonight. Who is your daddy? And so I trust tonight as we go through this message, God is going to richly bless you. Let's bow for a word of prayer. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Tonight we come again a yet another night, asking, O oh God, that you may be with us and that you may give us a word tonight. I pray, Father, that your word will penetrate hearts tonight and lives will be changed for you. As I stand, again, I plead, O oh God, and pray that you may stand by me and that you may speak through me, that above my voice will be heard the voice of Jesus, saying, This is the way. Bless us to this end, we pray in Jesus' holy name. Who is your daddy. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a sad state that we are in that there are many people in this world who do not know who their father is, who do not know who their daddy is. In fact, there are those who come into this world, live a full life, and die without knowing who their daddy is. So there is this confusion in identity or finding out who their father is or who their daddy is. Uh, and, and, and it happens many times, sometimes a woman who have multiple sex uh, partners uh, bring this problem upon herself, upon herself that uh, she, she do not know who her child or children father is. I have looked at many television programs where women would have brought men to the television set in certain programs uh, to and accusing them publicly or worldwide of being their child's father but not standing up. Only to discover when the test is done that that man that they accuse is not their child or children's father. Ladies and gentlemen, so there are a lot of children growing up even now as I speak in this world who do not know who their father is. It is a painful thing to grow up not knowing who your father is. But I want to move this message a little bit because the same confusion that is in the social world or the physical world where people do not know who their father is or accuse men or, or accuse men of being their child's father, ladies and gentlemen, the same exists in the spiritual world. We live in a world where everybody claims that they are God's children. Everybody seems to be a God's children. That's what the world believes. So the man that is living the most worthless life, uh, he claims that God is his father or God is his daddy. Ladies and gentlemen, make no mistake about it. We are here in this world because of the mercies and the grace of God. I want you to hear this tonight. We are here in this world because of the mercies and the grace of God. The Bible declares in Acts chapter number 17 and verse number 28, in him we live and move and have our being. Acts 17, 28, in him we live and move and have our being. So our very existence, we owe it to God. God is the one that have us existing today. Nevertheless, ladies and gentlemen, it is quite clear that though God have us alive today, and God have us existing today, not everybody in the world belong to God, or not everybody are one of God's children. And I'm going to prove to you tonight from the Bible, the Word of God, that not everybody who claim that they are children of God are really children of God. So we go to the book of Acts, to the book of John. Uh, John chapter number 8, Jesus was in a serious discussion here with the Jews. Now understand this, the Jews 
were God's chosen nation or God's chosen people. And Jesus had a discussion with them. Uh, the book of John chapter number 8, reading from verse 30, here is what the Bible says. John chapter number 8, reading from verse 30, the Bible says, And he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. So here Jesus is speaking about uh, being his disciples or being one of his disciples. And so there are some Jews, when they listened to the teaching of Jesus Christ, they accepted the teaching, accepted the gospel that Jesus Christ presented to them. But Jesus is saying to them, only if you continue in my word, you will be my disciple indeed. I want us to understand that this statement by Jesus really gets rid of the statement that people are saying that once you're saved, you're always saved. No, you have to maintain a saving relationship with Jesus for you to be saved because Jesus is saying, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciple. On the flip side, he is actually saying, if you do not continue in my word, you are no longer my disciple. And so the Bible continues in John 8, verse number 32. And he shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Then answered him, we be Abraham's seed, and we never in bondage to any man. How says thou, we shall be made free? So the Jews, in responding to what Jesus is saying about the Son making them free, the Jews is saying to Jesus, Hey, listen, we are Abraham's seed. And everybody knows that Abraham was God's friend. Abraham was a righteous man of God. And so the Jews are saying, because we are Abraham's seed, we are never in bondage. So what freedom are you talking about? Ladies and gentlemen, I want to declare to us tonight, if the Son have not set you free, you are still in bondage. I want to, I want, I want to say this again. If the Son, uh, Jesus Christ, have not set you free, you are still in bondage. You see, freedom comes from Jesus Christ. And only Jesus can set us free. And so the Bible says in verse number 34, Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever cometh sin is a servant of sin. And the servant abide not in the house forever, but the son abide forever. Jesus is saying to the Jews, If you commit sin, if you live a life of sin, you are a servant of sin. It continues in verse number 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my words had not place in you. So Jesus said to the Jews, you claim that you are Abraham's seed. Oh yes, Jewish, you are Abraham's seed. I understand that, but here's what Jesus is saying. If you are Abraham's seed, how is it that my words does not abide in you? How is it that you're trying to kill me? And if my words were abiding in you, you will not have tried to kill me. So the Bible says in verse number 39, very interesting story. In verse number 39, then answered, and said unto him, that's the Jews, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, if Abraham was your, if you were Abraham's children, then would you do the works of Abraham? Let me take this over. Then answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, if ye were Abraham's children, you would have do the works of Abraham. Remember, the Bible says that it, uh, Abraham believed in God and it was accounted unto him or credited to him for righteousness. So Jesus is saying, if you were Abraham's children, you would have been doing the righteous deed of your father Abraham. Uh, the Bible continues in verse number 40. But now you seek to kill me, a, a, a man that have... have a man that have told you the truth. 
Look at verse number 41. The Bible says in verse number 41, Ye do the deeds of your father. That then said they unto him, We be not born of fornication. We have our father, or we have one father, even God. Now watch this. The Jews was now accusing Jesus of being a bastard child. When they said to him, listen, we are not born of fornication. We know who our father is. We are connected to Abraham, but even greater than that, we are connected to God the Father. They were actually saying to Jesus, as far as you are concerned, we don't know who your daddy is because you is a bastard child. Because you came into this world or your mother was conceived before, your, before Joseph married to her. This is what they were saying to Jesus. But they did not understand the depths of Jesus' communication. And we're going to understand that Jesus responded by saying this. In verse number 42, Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would have loved me. For I proceed forth and came forth from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. So Jesus said to the Jews, if you were, a, if you were children of God, or if you, were, if you were God's seed, if you were chosen by God, and you were living for God, you would not try to kill me. The Bible declares, Jesus said, if God were your father, you would love me. Because you got to understand the Bible says that God is love. And any man, any woman that follows God and the principles of God's word, they will be loving people. I want you to understand, you cannot claim to be a child of God, yet still you have people who you are hating. You got to understand that darkness and light cannot dwell in the same place. Get this tonight and get it very clear. If God is your father and you are living for God, you cannot hate your brother or hate your sister. You cannot hate because hatred is of the devil. And this is why I find it very strange that some people who claim to be Christian, yeah, I said, even among Seventh-day Adventists, there are people they don't speak to, they don't talk to, they don't like, they don't mingle with, yet they are claiming to be children of God. I declare to you tonight, if God is your father and you are a child of God, you will be a loving person. You will live a life of love in the sight of, of God and in the sight of man. And you will not hate people, but you will love them even though they do you evil. The Bible declares you will still love them because God is enthroned within. And so the Bible says, verse number 43, Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my words. Watch this now. Ye are of your father, the devil. No, that's the word of Jesus. Ye are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of them. So it is quite clear, ladies and gentlemen, based on what Jesus said, that the devil has some children and God has some children. Hence the reason why the message tonight, who is your daddy? You and I, ladies and gentlemen, got to understand that the devil has children and God have children. You got to do your spiritual testing and see whose DNA that is in you. Are you a child of God or are you a child of the devil? Jesus said to the Jews, and the Jews was God's chosen nation. Uh, Jesus is saying to them, listen, you are of your father, the devil. He was a murderer from the beginning and a born not in the truth. So it means uh, that the children of the devil, uh, here it is now, they are also those that do not abide in the truth 
or accept the truth. Understand that if you are a child of God, when you hear the principles of the word of God, you are going to accept the word of God because Jesus said, or a sheep I have, which is not of this fall. My sheep knows my voice. So every child of God, when they hear the word of God, they respond to the word of God. Can somebody say amen? And so it is quite clear. It is quite clear, ladies and gentlemen, based on the scripture and based on what Jesus said to the Jews, that the devil have some children and God have some children. In the book of Romans, in the book of Romans, Romans chapter number 8, let's hear what the Bible has to say. Romans chapter number 8, we are going to read from verse number 30. Romans is the book, chapter number 8, verse 30. The Bible says this, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called. In verse number 31, what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Now, I want you to understand, once you are chosen by God, or once you are called by God, and you respond, ladies and gentlemen, to the call of God, the Bible is saying, if God be for you, it doesn't matter what the world plan, it doesn't matter what people do, the question is, who can be against you? you got to understand to receive this blessing, to receive this blessing of protection, we got to become children of God. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we already make it clear that the devil has some children, but you need to find out tonight who your daddy is. In the book of Jeremiah, hmm, in the book of Jeremiah, the Bible has something to say to us. Jeremiah, because we got to understand the conditions. We got to understand the condition of the heart of the children of the devil and the children of God. Look at what the Bible says in Jeremiah, chapter number 17. Jeremiah, chapter number 17, reading verse number 9. The Bible says, The heart is deceitful above everything and desperately wicked. Remember in John, chapter number 8, Jesus said to the Jews, you are of your father, the devil, and the work of your father you are doing. He was a murderer, and so it means that you, his child, will also be a mother. And the condition of mankind's heart, Jeremiah is describing our condition of the heart of mankind under, under the leadership of the devil. Jeremiah says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. That's the condition of mankind. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to become a child of God, we got to get rid of that heart condition. In fact, we got to fix this heart condition. But I, be, I declare to you tonight, the God that I serve, He is a mind regulator and a heart fixer. And He can cleanse you and wash you and give you a pure heart tonight. I declare to you tonight, when you shall discover who you are tonight, whatever you are, whoever you are, whoever your daddy is, and if you have been serving the devil for all your life, I declare to you tonight that God can change that tonight. God can change that tonight. Still in the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 13, watch the condition of mankind. Watch the condition of mankind as we go under the leadership of the devil. Watch the condition of mankind. Jeremiah, chapter number 13, reading verse number 28, the Bible says, can an Ethiopian change his skin or the leper his spot? Then may we also who do, then let's take this over. The Bible says, can an Ethiopian change his skin or the leper his spot? Asking question. Then may ye also do good that are accustomed to do evil. Now Jeremiah is, is telling us the condition of, of our life, of our heart, outside of the commonwealth of God, outside of being a child of Jesus Christ. Jeremiah is saying, listen, it doesn't matter what we do. We cannot change our condition. Ladies and gentlemen, I declare to you, we came into this world and we came and we meet a, a great controversy. We are caught up in this great controversy. Ladies and gentlemen, we did not ask to be in it, but we are deeply involved 
involved in this great controversy. God is trying to save us. At the same time, the devil is trying to keep us bound. But I declare tonight, ladies and gentlemen, even though we cannot do nothing about changing our heart and changing who our father is, God can do something tonight that God can change our heart condition that we can become loving people and we can become sons and daughters of God. First John, chapter number one. We are going to identify now who your daddy is. The children of God from the children of the devil. Now remember Jesus already said in the book of John 8 that you are after your father the devil. So it's quite clear that the devil has some children. Ladies and gentlemen, in 1 John chapter number 1, the Bible has something powerful to say. 1 John is the book. Chapter number, let's take chapter number 3, sorry. 1 John, chapter number 3. Listen to what the Bible says. Verse number uh, 7, the Bible says, Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. So the Bible declares in John, 1 John, chapter number 3, and verse number 7, listen, if you do righteousness, if you do righteousness, Listen, you are doing what God is doing because the Bible declares that God is righteous. In verse number 8, the Bible says, He that cometh sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might take away or destroy the works of the devil. So tonight, ladies and gentlemen, when Jesus said, you are of your father, the devil, here is another text that is exclaiming, explaining to us that, that listen, the Bible declares that, that he that commits sin or he that lives a life of sin is of the devil. So it's not hard to find out who your daddy is. All you've got to do is to check your life if your life does not go according to the will of God and according to the plans of God and according to the plans and principles of the word of God. The Bible declares that you are not of God, but you are of the devil. But I also declare to you tonight that all this can change, that your status can change, that you can switch family and come over to the family of God. But you've got to respond to the voice of God tonight. The Bible continues. Verse number 9. Same book. 1 John 3, chapter number 3. Verse 9. Whosoever is born of God doeth not commit sin. For the seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this, watch this verse now. In this the children of God are manifested. And the children of the devil. The Bible declares tonight here is how you can tell a child of God from a child of the devil. You got to understand your religious affiliation with any religion does not make you a child of God. Holding a Bible in your hand does not make you a child of God. A singing religious songs does not make you a child of God. Understand, you must go through a born again experience where that wicked nature that we were created with, ladies and gentlemen, God can subdue it. God will press it down and give us that spiritual nature, a nature that goes after righteousness. So the Bible says, the Bible says, the child of God will not practice sin. But in verse number 10, watch this now, verse number 10. Look at what the Bible says. In this, the children of God are manifested, and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither is he that loveth not his brother. So the Bible declares tonight, to be a child of God, you got to be doing righteousness and you got to love your brother. And I cannot stress too much because on, on the issue of love, because our world is filled with hate, ladies and gentlemen. The black hate the white and the white hate the black. you got to understand in the sight of God, it doesn't matter your complexion. It doesn't matter your skin tone. In the sight of God, we are all created by God. In the sight of God, 
God. Listen to me. Understand, mankind was created in the image of God. Sin must have done his work on us, but we were created in the image of God, ladies and gentlemen. But I declare to you tonight uh, to be a child of God. You got to be doing the will of God. To be a child of God tonight, uh, you got to follow the principles of the word of God and you will love your brother. So it doesn't matter. You can be a preacher. You can be a pastor. You can be a deacon. If you don't love, you're not of God. And that's what the Bible is saying to us tonight. The identifying marks. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I want to declare to us tonight, I want to declare to us tonight that we all can be children of God. In verse number, in verse number 11, in verse number 11, here's what the Bible says. For this is the message that we have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, or we should love our brother. Listen to what Jesus said in the book of John chapter number 14 and 15 and John 15 and 14. Ladies and gentlemen, John chapter number 15 and 14. This is what the Bible says tonight. The Bible says in John 15 and 14, Jesus speaking, Ye are my friends. If you do whatsoever, I command you. I want us to understand and I want this passage to sink in tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, even to be a friend of Jesus, you got to be obedient to Jesus. So I declare to you tonight, uh, if you're not doing the will of God, you're not the child of God. I declare to you tonight, uh, if you hate your brother and hate your sister, I know who your daddy is. Uh, and your daddy is not God, but your daddy is the devil. Because hatred comes from the devil. And guess what? Uh, and if hatred is living in your heart, you are a, a, a child a ruler by the devil but I declare to you tonight that hatred can go away because Jesus came into this world to break down all those barriers that sets us away from God or apart from God and set us apart from each other Jesus came and break down all those barriers in John 14 as we come to a close tonight John 14 and verse number 15 here's what Jesus say if you love me, keep my commandments. Did you hear that? In John 15, 14, it says, you are my friend. If you do whatsoever, I command you. And in John 14, 15, Jesus is saying, if you love me, keep my commandments. So it means, ladies and gentlemen, that those who are God's children will be commandment-keeping children. They will be willing to leave the principles of the doctrine. They will be willing to leave the principles of the Bible. They will be willing to live by the word of God. If we are children of God, we will be doing what Jesus said. Jesus said, you demonstrate your love as a child, as a daughter, as a son to me when you do what I command you. I want to close tonight by just telling you a story from the Bible. The sons of Eli. When you read the Bible, when you read about the sons of Eli, Eli was a high priest in Israel. And his sons were members of the priesthood. But they were doing things contrary to the will of God. They were members of the priesthood. They were partaking in temple business and partaking in temple service, but they were doing things contrary to the will of God. And when you read the scripture, the Bible declares that the sons of Eli, God says that the sons of Eli, they are not my children, but they are Baal's children or the devil's children. So it could be possible, I am religious, I go to church, I hold a Bible, I sing, I do all those things. But, that, but understand, the identifying mark says that you're going to love Jesus and you're going to do what God God says so tonight I'm saying to you we came by here to let you know you can break ties with the devil the devil do not have to no longer be your father but you can become a child of God tonight that's if you want to be a child of God tonight I remind us of Ezekiel of Isaiah sorry chapter number 1 and verse 18 Jesus said come now let's reason together let's talk about this confusion about everybody being God's children we are not all God's children except we accept the principles of the word of God. And know that you have a knowledge of what the Bible says. That God has some children and the devil has some children. You got to ensure that you make it in the family of God. Could I pray for you tonight? Could I pray for you tonight? Could I pray for you tonight? Father, thank you for the simplicity of your word. Thank you for the word of Jesus. Letting us know that the devil has some children, but God has some also. I pray that every listener tonight and every viewer tonight will ensure that they accept you so that they can become or be 
one of your child. In the book of John, chapter number 1 and verse 12, you says, To as many that receive you, them you give power to become the sons of God. That's what the Bible says in John. To become your son. And so tonight, there are many who are not your son, not your daughter. But they can receive that power tonight and become sons and daughters of yours. Thank you, God, for your blessings on tonight. And thank you for the blessings about all of those who have been viewing and listening. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen.